Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Tools Day. And I've got just tons of stuff here on the table and it is all about drilling in concrete. I referenced a couple videos ago that I wanted to make a video maybe on the SDS rotary hammers and specifically the one that I like to use currently. I feel like it's an all-in-one and this is the, uh, the DeWalt 263 um, and it has the built-in or attached dust extractor. So I think we will talk about that specifically, but once I started thinking about this video, I thought maybe it would be more important to kind of showcase the different types or different options that you have in drilling concrete and maybe why you would choose one or the other because I'm assuming that a lot of you out there don't drill a ton of concrete and you're not willing or wanting to invest in a big beast like this, but it has its use and we, we need it sometimes. You might just want something like this, a nice hand drill that has a hammer drill option. So let's go ahead and get into this video and talk about hammer drills. All right, so I wanted to have all these other options out here really just to kind of showcase what I've had the option to use and just don't prefer for one reason or the other. Uh, and I'm gonna start with this guy right here. Milwaukee sent this out to me and I put it through its paces. I used it on a job, um, drilling a bunch of anchor bolts, tap cons. And to be honest, I'm sure that this is just kind of an afterthought dust solution, which I do like, not just from a OSHA certification or you know keeping those silica dust to a minimum. I think that when you have a dust extractor on a rotary hammer, hammer drill, it's going to perform better when you put that screw or fastener into the concrete because that dust is not in there. So the dust extractor serves two purposes in my mind. This is so cumbersome. I don't know why Milwaukee, you know, didn't take a you know a different approach. I mean, yeah, I can move this around and kind of get it out of my way, but it's always it's always here, it's obtrusive, the viewing is horrible, so I just don't like it. I mean, I keep it in the shop in case I need a, 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 I got a different job and I need to run and do something, but I don't really enjoy it. Um, now, this is just your standard D-handle style inline rotary hammer, no dust extractor, um, super lightweight, you can probably just get in and go and do anything, but I haven't, I just got this, I haven't had time to really use it, but I just wanted to show like, this thing is an inch and an eighth SDS plus um, tool. Like it's gonna perform in a similar nature to these other ones that we're kind of showing. And this is what it's gonna look like uh, size wise if you don't have a dust extractor on it. Now, here we've got two very similar uh, rotary hammers from a spec standpoint, you know, slightly different but they're in the same category, the inch and an eighth SDS plus um, category, which I'll, I'll explain what the SDS plus means um, in, in a little bit, but I just kind of want to clear the table of all these other items that are out here. The reason I don't use this one specifically is because I don't think it gives me that much of a performance difference uh, when I'm drilling. This is a little bit higher joule rating, which means it hits a little bit harder, it's a little bit slower, and it's a little bit bigger and heavier. So I just don't use this one much, but this is a great option. It's a new SDS uh, that I got to try out at DeWalt's uh, event that I got invited to. And I was like, dude, that thing is sweet. It's super lightweight, light enough that they put a, uh, they put a hook on it. So you could just put it on your tool belt and work. So this is a great option, but this guy right here is the one I'm gonna talk about at the end of the video where I will give you the specs, the pricing, and all that information because this is, in my opinion, kind of the, the all-in-one tool that I don't like to buy personally because I like to buy the best tool for every application, which is why I have tools like this, which are way better for large applications, large, large bolts that you've seen us put our brackets into concrete with. Um, so I kind of wanted to show these three tools specifically because I think if you're in the market for a rotary hammer, hammer drill, you're either going to need something that's small, compact, all-in-one, 
you're gonna need something that's more specific to doing a really good job at drilling concrete, but maybe not insanely expensive, heavy, and um, you know, cumbersome. That's where this guy comes in. I mean, this thing will drill holes like no other, but it's super heavy, super bulky, expensive, and uh, not most people don't need that thing. So we've got a little bit of concrete that I wanted to drill here in a minute, but let me tell you about the SDS Plus that I was talking about earlier. If we were to look at this um, hammer drill bit, this is an SDS Plus. The size of the shank is where it goes into the drill. That's what determines the SDS Plus versus this. This is SDS Max. Now, this bit is a one inch bit on an SDS Max platform. That is what's gonna go into one of these bad boys here. And it's a massive bit, but this can still run up to an, oh, it's rated to run up to an inch and an eighth bit still on the SDS Plus platform. I would never do that because I have something like this. I feel like this right here is just gonna snap. I mean, that just seems like a massive bit to be putting into this platform, but you can do it. And it's what it's rated for. This guy's rated for up to an inch and seven eighths. So that's something I wanted to just talk about. Some people don't understand that. When you look at the actual uh, rating or the model sticker on the tool, this is saying an inch and an eighth SDS plus. This is what it's rated for, up to an inch and an eighth. This guy right here, this one says inch and seven eighths. So that's a massive bit. I mean, I can't imagine another three quarters of an inch on this bit. This guy right here, this says it's rated for five eighths, which means I can put this in here and I can operate this and this is what it's rated for in concrete. Once again, I wouldn't do it because it's, it's not really, it's not gonna be as efficient. And that's what I kind of wanted to show you guys um, as well as why I think dust extraction is very important above and beyond a health safety type of situation. So let's go ahead and uh, do some drilling. And I think you're gonna see the difference between the three and why I think you would choose one over the other for your application. And I can tell you why I will choose one or the other for my application. All right, so what we have here is this old piece of concrete I found out in my uh, lot. And it looks like I've already drilled a couple holes in here at some point. We've got a 5 8 bit that I can put on these two and then another 5 8 bit. But I don't think it really matters that they're not gonna be the exact same bit, guys. I think you're gonna see the difference between the tools and that's really what I wanna showcase. This is rated for 5 8 so this is what this thing says it can do. So let's go ahead and drill a hole, listen to the sound, listen or look at the speed that it's rotating and how it's drilling, okay? Let's, let's take a look. Okay, I don't think I wanna go that fast. Okay. I'm not gonna sit here and do this forever. You guys don't want me to do that forever. That is a slow, noisy, and very high vibration in my hand, a way of doing things. Let's go ahead and throw this bit over here on the inch and an eighth DeWalt. Let's go ahead and run this and let's see the difference. So two things, that was probably about the same time frame of drilling, but you'll notice I went, I went that deep versus literally scratching the surface, okay? No dust, nice clean hole, that's awesome. Now let's go ahead and throw, actually I can't throw this specific bit, but I've got a similar 5 8 bit that's in the SDS Plus. That's the reason I can't move them across. Sorry, SDS Max, because this is an SDS Plus bit. Okay, that thing goes in like butter. I mean, that literally, I don't even have to push in. I just let the weight of the tool do its thing and that's how deep we just went in. So 
I'm pretty sure like, uh, scratched the surface, went in. I mean, we're not being real official here. I realize that. There's the difference. So I went in an, another inch or so, almost double, and I didn't even time this. Um, the point is, this will work. If you need a easy solution, you're not drilling concrete all the time, this will clearly do the job. It's rated for it. It's gonna take a long time. It's gonna be loud. It's gonna be kind of messy. Um, but this did a good job with great dust control. Um, actually, you know, it's not really fair. I have a dust control system for this. I'm not gonna bust it out. E any of these options you can get dust control for. Um, but this bad boy hits really hard for large fasteners. And just for fun, let's go ahead because I think it's always fun to do really large drilling. Let's throw this guy on. And listen, I'm not, I'm not pushing down. I'm just letting the weight of the tool do, do the work. Like that is an impressively large hole without a whole lot of effort. And this thing claims that I can put this guy on here at an inch and an eighth, but I'm not gonna specifically do that. That doesn't make sense to me because I have the option of something like this, but this is capable of doing it. And I think you can see how well it does it with little effort, um, not a lot of noise. It's a pretty quiet tool great dust collection that's added into it with great visibility. So when you're working in tight spaces, all of this small form factor does a great job. Um, I think it's an unfair uh, fight to put that 5 8 bit onto this Makita because it's more appropriate to grab this sort of tool when you're gonna be working with these sorts of fasteners. This is a Tapcon and it's a quarter inch Tapcon and I'm gonna use this uh, bit here that comes with this comes with the box of Tapcons, and um, I still think that you're gonna see how much better this is, but this is a fair comparison on what you would use this tool for and this tool. So let's go ahead and drill a hole um, and just see what we get. Uh... Okay, so this is a brand new bit, came with the box. I got about a half of an inch in. Now I can't put that in here, but I do have, this is a brand that literally I buy with these and it's for this sort of fastener. So it's the right depth, it's the right length, the right diameter, all that good stuff. So just in that short amount of time, not only did I drill probably deep enough for this fastener, but it vacuums out the hole. And the reason that is so important for us is because fasteners will drive, and most fasteners say you need to clean out the hole before you put it in. A lot of people will message and say, how do you get Tapcons to work? They always break for me. And I ask them, do you vacuum out the hole? They say, no, they just drill deep. Well, that's a lot of the problem. When you get a nice clean vacuumed hole, that is gonna drive in a lot better. So once again, this will work. This is what this is more appropriate for, but I can promise you, I know what I would grab probably to do the task nine, 99 times out of 100. All right, so now I think after seeing those demos, you can see why I do like this tool. Uh, great visibility, great dust collection, and it kind of runs the gamut of being able to utilize the size of bits that I need. So I just wanted to give you guys more specs on this tool, more information, pricing. And this is the 20 volt platform. It's gonna run off the 20 volt batteries that DeWalt you know, uses for most of their tools. You can also put their flex volt, 60 volt batteries in it. Um, I really love the fact that the dust collection requires no additional battery. It just clips on and off right here. So if we were to show that, boom, 
which makes this now very lightweight. This thing weighs in at 5.9 pounds. So super lightweight without the dust extraction, but even with, honestly, it doesn't feel, doesn't feel heavy to me. It's, it's a good inline um, tool with good visibility. Now this tool has a no load RPM of up to 1165, which brings in 4,300 BPM and a whopping three joules. If you wanna know what all that stuff means, go ahead and hit Google and type in a joule, uh, but just know that that's a pretty good rating. These tools are made to do really just one thing only, uh, which is to drill into concrete, but you can select whether you want it to just chisel and not rotate the bit. So you can put a chisel in there and just get those uh, hits into concrete if you're busting up some you know, old tile or whatever, or you can just go into the straight drilling mode and not have the hammering if you're just wanting to I don't know why you would use that because if you're just gonna drill, just grab a drill, but it has the option to turn off the hammering and also the drilling independently. Now talking about the dust extractor here, this is, I love this because it's in line. It's super compact, good visibility. We've got HEPA filtration and it can, it can handle up to a 10 inch bit. So you can lock this into whatever depth that you want it to stop at, which is really nice when you're drilling around PEX tubing and concrete you can make sure that you only go so deep. So that's a nice little option on this. And if you want to add this to the tool, um, you can do that. You don't have to buy this as a kit, but if you're curious about pricing, you can buy this whole setup with two six amp hour batteries for about 560 bucks. Or if you just wanna do the tool, that's around 340. And if you already have a tool and you wanna buy the dust extractor, that's gonna be $179. And one other thing I forgot to mention, you maybe have, you maybe noticed it during the demo, but when you're done drilling, the vacuum continues to run for two seconds to clean out the system. So it doesn't just automatically turn on and off, it runs for a little bit longer, which is a good feature. So that's the, in my opinion, my current favorite hammer, rotary hammer to grab. I can do just about anything that I need to do. Yes, I would grab a bigger tool most of the time when I have to do larger fasteners just because it's faster, but this is capable. It's the right price range. It's the right feel. Everything is nice about it. And hopefully this helps you if you're in the market for a rotary hammer and you didn't know what to do. I think this is a great option. I will of course leave links to this stuff down below if you're interested. Uh, but hey, I hope this was more helpful than anything. A lot of you were curious about rotary hammers and why we use what we use. So that's why I wanted to make this video. If you guys have an idea for the next tools day, something that you're curious about, doesn't just have to be a tool, it could be anything. Go ahead and drop that down below in the comments. I will read those. And uh, with that, if you enjoyed this, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, I greatly appreciate it. And we'll catch you on the next tools day.